After the iPad's been powered off, you'll want to heat the glass to loosen the adhesive. Once the glass has been adequately heated, you can slide an opening tool in between the glass and the back housing itself. Though once this is done, you'll want to swap it out for a plastic tool of some sort as the metal can further crack the glass and or sever any flexes that may be hiding underneath. For now, you'll want to only separate the top and the sides of the glass as there are flex cables at the bottom that can be easily damaged. While going around the iPad, if there are any smaller pieces of glass, you'll want to remove those now before removing the largest piece. Removing the smaller pieces of glass after removing the largest one puts the LCD at more risk for being damaged. When prying the bottom away from the iPad, you'll want to be very careful as there's a Wi-Fi antenna flex that can be easily damaged. Having a lot of patience and being very careful in this area can reduce the possibility of the flex being severed. There are two separate antennas for this flex, so you will want to be careful on both sides of the home button when prying the glass away. Once I get the glass off of this, you should be able to see more in detail where the flexes are located. Once the bottom of the glass has been unadhered, you should be able to begin prying it away from the iPad starting at the top. Now we can begin to remove the LCD. To start, there will be four Phillips screws in each corner of the LCD that will need to be removed. These screws do vary in length, so keep close track of them. You'll also notice that there will be two magnets that will either be stuck to the screws or the glass. You'll want to remove these and save these for the new piece. Once the screws have been removed, you can begin to pry up the LCD. Though do keep in mind that the back of it is adhered on both sides, so you'll want to slide a thin tool underneath it to unadhere it from the back plate. Once it's been unadhered, it can be laid down on top of the glass. You'll then want to remove the 15 total Phillips screws that hold the shield on. You'll want to separate the two screws that are near the volume flex though, as they are longer than the rest of the screws. To easily remove the plate, you'll want to remove it on the left side first, as there are little notches cut into the metal back housing that allow the plate to slide through easily. With that plate now off, you should see a shield that covers the clips for the LCD, digitizer, and battery. The three Phillips screws that hold it down will need to be removed, as well as the shield itself. Once the shield has been removed, the LCD can then be unclipped and removed as well. Once the LCD has been unclipped, I like to lay it on a cloth to make sure that it's not damaged. Then once the digitizer is unclipped, the glass as a whole can be removed. There's usually adhesive that holds this part of the flex down, so just be aware of that when removing the glass. Once you get the piece of glass off, you'll want to remove the two magnets if you haven't already, as well as the camera spacer, as you'll need all these later. You'll then want to go around the edges of the iPad and scrape up any remaining glue or glass that may be stuck to the bezel. When I do this, I use my thumb to push the tool away from the internals of the iPad so that I don't slip and cause any unintentional damage.
though when using isopropyl alcohol you'll want to be careful as it can damage flex cables and internal components. If the new piece of glass didn't come with any adhesive, you'll want to apply some now. Applying the adhesive directly to the housing is good for two reasons. One, it ensures that you don't use too much tape, and two, it ensures that you don't tape over any flex cables, which could cause problems for you if you ever need to open the iPad again for whatever reason. Once the adhesive is ready, you can clip the digitizer and the LCD back in. Once these are both clipped back in, the shield and the three corresponding screws can be replaced. Once this shield is secure, you'll want to grab the back plate for the LCD and lay that in. Putting the right side in before the left side allows it to be placed in easily. Once the plate is sitting flat, you can replace the Phillips screws for it. Once all the screws are replaced, the LCD can be laid back in and the four screws that hold the corners in can be replaced as well. Before finally laying the glass in, you'll want to clean the LCD. After using spray and a cloth to clean the LCD, I like to use scotch tape to remove any little dust particles that may be left over. Once the LCD has been cleaned, you'll want to replace the two magnets that go on the right side. Once the magnets are adhered, you can begin to close the glass, though you'll want to remember to take that inner film off before closing it. Pressing around on all areas where the adhesive was under the glass will ensure that you get a good seal. Once it's sealed up completely, you should be good to go.